Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to talk to you about the Thunder X3. That's an ARM-based server processor with up to 96 cores and 384 threads. 96 cores and 384 threads. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Marvel have been talking a bit about the Thunder X3. They talked a bit about it earlier in the year. Now we've had the Hot Chips conference and they revealed even more details. Let's just quickly look at a bit of the history. So down the bottom left-hand corner, we'll see the original Thunder X from 2016. That was of course followed by the Thunder X2 in 2018. 28 nanometers, then to 16 nanometers. Now the seven nanometer part, the Thunder X3, comes in two variants, at least two variants, the 60 core one and the 96 core one. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And of course, they're still working on the next one after that, the Thunder X4. Okay, so if we look at the history of this, we can see that Cavium, so not Marvel, Cavium built a server class ARMv8 processor based on its own custom core. We now call that the Thunder X. X1, it was really the Thunder X, 48 cores, 48 threads, that means it was just, there was no threading, it was just one uh, just one thread per core, 1.9 gigahertz, 64-bit uh, only, Didn't wouldn't run any ARM 32-bit code, so it's a 64-bit uh, ARCH64, that's the ARM V8. Then what happened in 2016 as well, Cavium acquired the Vulcan custom core design, not to be confused with the uh, graphics API, that was just the name of um, the core design from Broadcom as Broadcom exited that market. And then uh, Cavium carry on developing that and in 2018 we had the Thunder X2 which was based on Vulcan and it had 32 cores or 128 threads so it was SMT4. And we'll talk more about this in a moment, basically four threads per core. Then it ran at 2.5 gigahertz, ARM uh, 8.1. It was the most widely deployed ARM-based server processor in the world, and it was the first ARM-based processor to get into the top 500 list of supercomputers. Then in 2018, Marvel bought Cavium, and so now Marvel are the ones that are bringing out the uh, Thunder X3. Okay, so here it is, the Thunder X3. So it comes in two variations, a single die with 60 uh, cores or a dual die, all within the same chip, the same package, but two dies inside of it with 96 cores. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. ARM uh, V8.3 with some features taken from 8.4 and 8.5, 30% uh, increase uh, in uh, single threaded performance at the same uh, frequency and up to four threads per core. And as I said, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Then what else we got here? Look at this, eight uh, DDR4 channels. Now, of course, remember when you're dealing with servers, you want lots and lots of memory access and you want lots and lots of IO access. And that's why also down here, you've got 64 PCI uh, express generation four lanes and 16 PCI express controllers. And if you look at the thing over here, you can see in the middle here, you've got the 60 cores, and then we've got things like 90 megabytes of L3 cache, absolutely brilliant, look at that. And then power management, the PCI, SATA USB, and the memory. So there's these ways out over the different interconnects, over the different interfaces to get this processor all the information it needs, whether it's from memory, whether it's from the hard disks. And so just looking quickly at the performance increase, this is the integer increase for the difference between the uh, TX2, the TX3, and then the uh, different tests here, floating point and data center code here. This is where they're really aiming it at because this means things like running databases, Java middleware, that kind of stuff. And we'll talk more uh, about that in a moment. But as you can see, always good when all the numbers are going up and that's what you'd expect from one generation to the next. So if you're interested in things like uh, ARM-based servers, then my idea is that maybe you want to know more about machine learning and data science. So there's this great deal going on at the moment, machine learning and data science certification training bundle. Take a deep dive into machine learning and data analysis across eight courses and 48 hours of content, and that's only $35. And what do you get in here? Look, we've got you can see we've got TensorFlow, we've got some Python stuff, we've got R, other couple of courses here with R, more Python. So you've got TensorFlow, R, and Python, 48 hours only $35 and if you buy this course through the link in the description you also help out this channel okay let's carry on so I wanted to talk more about the uh, four-way SMT, so that's the threading. Now, first of all, I have a whole video about hyper-threading, so how it works. 
So if you don't understand threading, and really I should you go and watch that video first, because that'll give you an understanding of the difference in a core uh, and a thread, and there should be a link coming up here that will take you to that video. But basically, you've got some front end stuff that allows kind of the initial stuff presenting to the rest of the processor, even to the OS, it sees like each of those cores as a CPU. So there's shared stuff here. Uh, and there's duplicated stuff. So each thread has its own state, so it knows what's going on, but the execution units and the pipeline, all this stuff is shared. And what this basically allows you to do is that when there is a gap here in this process, when this process is kind of got a, a bubble in it, it, you can fill it with stuff from another thread, which is another task going on on the uh, server. Now, what's interesting is that four-way SMT actually only adds 5% to the overall transistor count, which is pretty uh, amazing. So the Thunder X3 single core, single die has 60 cores, which gives you 243. So when you booted up Linux on this, it would say, oh, you've got 240 cores. In fact, we know they're not cores, only 60 of them are, but the rest of them look like cores, and it's this sharing here. As I say, again, do go and watch that video on this. But of course, on the desktop, we see kind of double the number of threads as there are cores, but here on the server, they've gone with four-way. And that's important for performance, certain types of performance loads, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now, of course, since you've got this four way, these four threads, then if you look at this picture of the pipeline here, you can see that there are times when you're using four things and then there are times when you're sharing all the different blocks. So what happens is you want to be able to share fairly the different threads across this shared resource, which is this basically this pipeline. And so how do you do that? First of all, FET prioritizes threads with fewer instructions in the pipeline over threads with more instructions. Well, that makes sense. Basically, if a thread is basically gonna starve, then it needs to get its next instructions threads have already got lots of instructions in the pipeline what well, they can basically uh, they can wait a moment at the dispatch side which is after kind of the uh, the fetch part then you've got similar to fetch but considering also it takes into consideration what's coming next scheduler is basically age based so basically they've got the micro ops going down the pipeline here and the micro ops tend to be fairly well one to one relationship to the actual arm instructions not necessarily one to one but basically they are and so these micro ops basically the oldest one gets gets done next that's as, as simple as that but at the other end when you're retiring which is the thing that basically uh, makes the final state uh, kind of set for the fact that instruction has been executed then that is in favor of the threads that have more instruction to retire so you don't want a backlog building up over the thread so again shared resources all these things are shared and you've kind of got four things feeding into them and feeding out of them and you have to prioritize those to get them all down the pipeline and so when you look at the kind of performance of that if you've got low instructions per cycle and by that we mean that the processor isn't running at 100% because it's doing things like I.O. It's waiting for something from the disk, it's waiting for something from the memory. So the CPU is going, oh, I've got nothing to do now while you do that. So that might be, for example, a database. You're running MySQL, then there are times when it's going to be looking at memory, looking at the uh, at the disks. Okay, so obviously if you take the one thread performance as an index of one, when you go to two threads, because of the way it works, you can actually get a performance of 1.79. You're not getting a performance of two Two, but you can get a performance of 1.79 when you've got extra load added on to the, what's going on. And then when you go to four threads, that gets you an index of 2.2. So basically four threads in a low IPC situation is the same as having two cores. That's basically the way to look at it. Now, when you've got a medium IPC, then if you've got one thread is again one, two threads is 1.38. Now you notice that it's down from 1.78. And then four threads gives you 1.8. Uh, seven three so four threads is the same as kind of one and a half one and three quarters uh, cores if you're using a medium instructions per cycle and then if you're really hammering your your um, your processor so let's say here look at this uh, x264 so encoding video encoding cpu only not using the hardware again if one thread was one then two threads well it's 1.8 so you can see how this has gone down and four threads is only 1.28 so if you were example a, a workstation doing you know video editing let's just say and then you're doing video encoding having all these threads isn't really going to help you and that would be true also on a, on a desktop pc with a, with an intel or amd processor but if you're running a server 
you know, and you're running a website and you've got all these connections coming in and there are times when you're looking things up in the database, looking things up in the memory and more and more people are connecting and more and more transactions happening. Well, actually having all these multiple threads can be very, very useful for overall performance. And that's how they show this here. Look, this is the light blue here part is real cores. And then this part here is the threads. And you can see, obviously, as you've got real cores, the performance just goes up straight there, almost straight according to the, the number of core count. And then once you start going over the number of physical cores and into the number of threads, it does start to go down. But notice here, they've chosen, see how they've chosen these numbers here? Because look, it levels out here. Okay, maybe there wouldn't be much to gain by going up higher and higher and higher here. In fact, you go to the very end, it could actually be detrimental. But at this point here, it's still worth having those threads for SQL performances. Again, this is the SQL performance, so servers. So if you're doing something that's, you know, it's not only compute bound, it's, uh, it's memory and uh, IO bound, then you can see the advantages here of having all those extra threads without having to have full cores. And only for a 5% gain in the area of the processor, that's pretty good. So here's a quite complicated picture here that I don't want to go into too much. It's about the L3 caching internet, but I wanted to talk about why is it 60 cores? Because we normally have 32 cores, 16 cores, 48 cores, 64 cores we might have, but why 60 cores? Well, if you look at the way they've done this interconnect, each one of these orange boxes is actually four cores. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 times four, of course, is uh, 60. So that's why it's 60 cores. And on the 96 core version, uh, there must be 12 of these orange boxes, uh, the way it's all stitched together. That's what it basically is. Okay, so there it is. There's a quick overview of the Thunder X3. That's a 64-bit uh, ARM-based server solution that is now sampling, and we're gonna see servers with that pretty soon. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.